Welcome, everyone. I'm Janelle Kazira, your host for a Proton Media podcast. Today, I am joined via Skype with Sammy Ama Aejo, uh, who is a researcher at the Business Innovation and Technology Research Center at Alta University in Finland. And um, I'll give you a little bit of backstory on why Sammy's here with us today. So uh, you might remember, some of our regular uh, blog readers might remember, in March of last year, we interviewed Dr. Petra Bosch on the blog, and um, we talked about a new research project that she was doing at the time. It was called the Professional Collaboration and Productivity in Virtual Worlds, or PROVWO for short. And she was part of a team studying how virtual worlds can be used for professional collaboration and if virtual worlds can enhance productivity in globally distributed teams. And Petra is based also in Alto University in Finland, and she was doing the research project um, at Stanford University here in the U.S. And at the time, we talked to Petra about her initial research phase, where she was looking at how companies in the U.S., Asia, and Europe were using virtual worlds for business. And a few months later, in August, we interviewed Petra again, and we got an update on her progress and the completion of her first research phase. And we had learned at the time that she had interviewed 44 professionals at companies using virtual worlds, and uh, they focused their interviews on the challenges and benefits of virtual world adoption. And so the Pro Vivo project has been progressing since then, and the researchers have some new updates to share with us. So today I'm bringing you Sammy, who is one of the researchers uh, with the project, to tell us what they've been working on over the past year and what they've discovered. So welcome to the Skycast, Sammy. Good to have you with us. Thank you, Chino. Glad to be here. So I understand that you have been working on creating a benchmark report called the Benchmark of 3D Virtual Environments. So can you give us a little bit of an overview of what that report is and what it contains? Yeah, sure. Um, the report contains some tips uh, or like, pointers for people or firms that are starting just now to use these virtual platforms for task or professional oriented use. Um, and basically what we did with my colleague, we had a uh, extensive look in different virtual platforms and took about 70 of them and then used these, uh, these findings from the report that you mentioned that Petra did and then filtered uh, those 70 platforms through these uh, through these use cases and then had actually some uh, some good examples of different types of uh, platforms that would be suitable for these different types of use cases. So tell me about the criteria that you use to benchmark platforms. Uh, we use different types of criteria for different types of platforms. Originally, we started out those uh, with those 70 types of platforms and then filtered them through uh, this sort of a... Um, we took just those environments that were task-orientated or used more in a professional setting. Um, and then we actually took the four different use cases, uh, which basically were small collaborative meetings, large events, learning and training, and product development and process simulation. And what we then did, we took different types of aspects, depending on the use case, and formed these different types of criteria for each case. So for example, small collaborative meetings, we had uh, productivity tools and uh, customization for the environment, that played an important role uh, in what types of platforms and environments should be these best, uh, these sort of most suitable environments for that use case. So productivity tools, for example, included um, 
video streaming or file sharing with the environment and uh, different sorts of uh, um, uh, aspects of the virtual platforms that we then use to form this criteria. How did you sort of begin to understand what criteria would be important in this report? The most important aspect where, where we actually started from with my colleague was the uh, report done by Petra and Anu, Anu Sivuna. So that was the, uh, uh, the findings from that, uh, from their research basically gave us an overview of what types of different uh, aspects and, um, uh, and properties people that were using these virtual platforms in professional context were looking for in them. So we basically took those and uh, uh, found that, okay, these different types of properties are what people are actually looking for when they are using this for such and such use case. So who do you see as a potential user of this report? Uh, basically, the report can be used by anyone who has um, interest in virtual platforms, but it is most best leveraged with uh, people that are actually just now starting starting out to use these virtual environments in professional or task oriented contexts. So basically, just people that are looking forward uh, for uh, different types of uh, examples uh, for environments that are the most suitable for their task or use. So you would say it's a good starting point if you are thinking about using virtual environments uh, for business? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That was one of the uh, most important, important aspects and outcomes for uh, our project as well, so that we would have these different sorts of concrete uh, findings for people that are actually using it in business. So, how do you think um, a benchmark can be done uh, right now in such a new market? Well, I think we had the benefit of having Petras and Anus uh, findings from their report. So we basically had already some ideas of what people who are using them or have already used them in professional contexts find beneficial in these environments. So we already had these uh, had these aspects and knowledge of the mar market. So we basically could give some guidance on that and some aspects that would be useful for people to look at. So after doing this report then, what's your overall view on the state of the virtual environment market as it relates to enter enterprises? Well, I think the market is still, still uh, quite a lot volatile and it's obviously changing. Uh, new firms are coming already in the market and some are exiting the market. But obviously there are use cases, for example, small collaborative meetings that are more and more used in business contexts. So they are somewhat the mainstream of what virtual platforms are used for. So in those types of use cases, they are starting to become uh, platforms and uh, providers that are uh, that that have very very specific and good products for those types of uses. So, of the uh, there are thirty three technologies that you looked at in your report, mm -hmm. and one of them was Proton Media's Protosphere, and you had included it under two use cases. You included it under the small collaborative events and under the large events use cases. So what was it about uh, the Protosphere technology that you thought it was a good fit for both scenarios? Well, basically, the uh, productivity tools was the one 
aspect that mainly mainly set it up for uh, small collaborative meetings. It had very very strong strong productivity tools, and it could be also implemented with previous uh, previous productivity tools that are more used in used in professional contexts, for example, different types of office productivity tools that are already present in many companies. With the uh, large events, we basically had the scalability factor in there as well. That, so there were different types of uh, platforms that could be scaled up to provide for large events and had just have the uh, ability to have large groups of users simultaneously to attend an event. What expectations did you have going into the study that were confirmed once you were done? Well, I think mostly what was confirmed, at, at least for me personally, was that the market is still quite new and you have a lot of virtual platforms that are actually more of a uh, or are more used in social contexts so for social networking and stuff like that so basically that was one aspect that i previously already encountered but um actually it was surprising though to find these environments and platforms that already supported and have also added so many different types of uh, productivity tools and support for these types of traditional office productivity tools that are already used. So then, you know, you keep uh, coming back to the idea of productivity and a lot of what we've been talking about. So are you finding that productivity is a major um, or an improvement in productivity is a major goal that companies in general want to achieve right now? And they're seeking yeah. virtual environments to do so? Yeah, I think so. And one of the uh, inherent benefits of virtual platforms, I think it, it is productivity since it, it, all, it almost is implicated that with virtual platforms, people are not co-located. They might be located in different locations. So you have people that are, uh, that are actually participating from different places and different time zones. So you need to have that type of um, tools to support different, just normal tasks of collaborating on a document or collaborating on a uh, PowerPoint. Uh, and basically what, what productivity then means is just the means to, means to actually collaborate on, on a document or a uh, topic. And it's interesting though to look at how, um, you know, some of these productivity goals might not be able to be achieved in the real world and how we need to have, you know, virtual environments to do so. What are your thoughts on that? That is true. Um, actually, one of the use cases that uh, looked into process simulation as well is one of those that I think kind of uh, handles the same topic as you mentioned because when you're actually uh, doing collaborative work on 3D models or uh, 3D uh, presentations of different spaces or buildings you have this um, further property of uh, actually collaborating with people in that space, although that space or object um, might not be at the time implemented in the real world. So it might not be actually a, uh, something that uh, something that is already done. It might be a, um, a process line on a factory that hasn't yet been implemented. So it gives a lot of uh, a lot of opportunities to look at different types of different types of um, 
uh, realizations that you can actually do when the actual product is being developed. So what would you say the some of the biggest takeaways are for someone who reads your report? I think the biggest uh, biggest takeaway is um, is the knowledge of actually getting a comprehensive view of the whole market and also having good examples for different use cases and platforms that you can actually follow up on. Uh, but I would advise that it is just that it is the first first step toward using them, using virtual platforms and virtual environments in professional contexts. So everyone who is actually looking forward to implementing them in, in business, uh, I would advise to try out a lot, try different, try different virtual platforms, and just to have your personal idea of what these type of platforms provide for you. So there is, I think there is no one exact platform that's, that fits in every use case. So you might have different platforms that suit well for you and different platforms that don't suit you so well. So you need to have that personal experience as well. But the uh, report provides a good overview of the whole situation. So you would say someone should take a look at the report, take a look at the use cases, figure out what one might fit their situation best. Um, take a look at the technologies there and try them out? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I think at this point with the volatile market and with the new market, it is, it is best to have your own, own experiences as well with different types of platforms. And I think it's always also that case with technology that you need to have your own experiences with different types of products. Uh, whatever the technology might be. And I think with virtual platforms, it isn't any different. So you need to have your personal experience, but you also can use these sorts of reports and findings to guide you and have some sort of a, um, initial idea. And also take some time away from the, uh, the whole, uh, whole process of uh, mapping out the whole market and the products in the market. So will your report be updated? And you know, what's the, the next step of the ProVivo project? The next step is actually that we're doing a uh, update and that should be out uh, late September, early October, hopefully. And we're also doing different types of modules module updates. So we're not just doing the uh, update on the use cases and on the platforms. So uh, different types of aspects have already changed. For example, in, in uh, Protosphere, uh, different, different properties have come up that are actually very significant uh, with the, uh, with the uh, benchmarking. But also we're doing these different types of modules that look into different aspects such as uh, uh, security aspects and implementation aspects of virtual world. So you get this uh, different type of a, um, overview of how these actual virtual platforms fit for, let's say, the IT department in your business and the uh, uh, security aspects of uh, the IT department. All right, well, good luck with your next step, Sammy. Thanks for coming on with us Thank today. You. Pleasure, pleasure. And we hope to check in with you again when you have some more updates for us. Yeah, sure do. All right, have a good day. Yep, yeah, bye.